on the issue of the governor that I had raised. Yes. And I was, well, it's at PDF page 100, paragraph 237. That's petitioner's written submissions A. Chapter 9, what, which one do you want to start? Yes, Mothers, I was, Mothers. And I said, the action of the governor and swearing in the respondent. Page number counsel. What? Sorry. Mothers, PDF page 100, paragraph 237, Mothers. A. Compilation. PDF 100, yeah. Para 230. So, Justice Shah doesn't have it at the moment. Page 100, PDF 100, paragraph 237. Right, got it. Justice has it. Hmm? Yes. May I, if the law Yes. Says. The President of Shiv Sena, Udav Thakre, had publicly and admittedly not aligned supported the BJP. In these circumstances, the satisfaction of the governor for the purpose of calling respondent for to be the chief minister and the head of 39 rebel MLAs of the Shiv Sena, which is endorsed by the Shiv Sena political party, is by itself ex facia unconstitutional. The constitution prohibits recognition of rebel MLAs of a political party under the 10th schedule, and the action of the governor legitimizes what is expressly prohibited by the constitution. The governor has sought to recognize what the constitution prohibits. The governor is also not empowered under law to recognize who is the Shiv Sena. That is the domain of the election commission. Admittedly, recognition of the Shiv Sena and its leadership by Udav Thakre has been endorsed by the election commission. And there was no dispute, whatever, or challenge before the appropriate authority on the 30th of June. There was no petition well, before the election commission on the 30th of June. That was filed only on the 19th of July. The uh, Udav Thakare was the chief minister of the Shiv Sena. So in what capacity did the governor Maraj give an audience to? Eknath Shinde and administered the oath of office to him. How is that the discretion of the governor to do that? Which party was the governor Malert uh, recognizing for the purposes of forming the government with the support of the BJP? That's, Malert, that's, that's the heart of the matter, and that's nothing to do with the power of the speaker now, Malert. This is an independent challenge, Malert, on the appointment of Eknath Shinde as chief minister by the governor, and the act of the governor is subject to judicial review. In these circumstances, the governor in his ipsy dixit guided by his political masters in Malafide and in the teeth of the provisions of the constitution granted a de facto. What, is, what it does, Mullahs, what paragraph 3, when paragraph 3 is deleted, the governor by his action recognizes paragraph 3. He recognizes the split. This is not a stage where well, the government is to be formed. This is a stage when an elected government is running. So your lordships for the first time will have to decide what are the discretionary powers of the governor in that context? And can his discretion be used to topple a government with respect to a set of people who say they are split from the Shiv Sena, 
when a Shiv Sena chief minister is already in place and the governor does not ask the Shiv Sena leader as to whether you are endorsing this or not. By not asking the Shiv Sena, he is recognizing a split. No, no, there is no discretion after an elected government is formed. The government then will fall millers on the floor of the house. Then the question of the discretion of the governor will come in. If there's a no confidence motion, government falls, then the question will come in as to who the governor will call. But the governor cannot by his act topple a government. No, the question is not that. When, when these, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the governor was approached, when the governor was approached by, by BJP as well as Eknath Shinde, and the governor, to, was to, governor told us to have a, a trust vote, Mullers, on what basis did he ask us to do that? He obviously recognized the 39, otherwise he wouldn't have asked us for a trust vote. There was no occasion to. Because they continue to be in the Shiv Sena, that's their own case. But they did not, Mullahs, move away from the Shiv Sena. So if they did not move away from the Shiv Sena, which is their own case, on what basis did the governor say, you, you, you have a trust vote? Unless, he recognizes that the 39 members are rebels. They have split from the Shiv Sena. Therefore, they and BJP have a majority. Therefore, you go and show your um, majority in the House and have a trust vote. That is, well, it's uh, logical. That's the only way to look at it. And the governor must act consistent with constitutional morality. Malad. What's the moral, moral foundation of such an act? I've already said deletion of paragraph three, I don't have to read. Of course, it's a principle of constitutional merit. Well, then I want to just note the page, Mother, the Nabam Rebia at page 1145. Uh, 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 one, four, one, one, four, four, paragraph 210, Mother. Just note that. Para? Para 210. Don't mistake take the book, but just note that. I'll just read it. Last four lines below of that paragraph. Admittedly, the governor never called for a floor test, nor did he ever require the chief minister to establish his majority in the house. The governor's actions based on feuds and wrangles of a breakaway group, which is not recognized under the 10th schedule, cannot be constitutionally condescended. What was the last sentence? The governor's? The last. I'll just read it again. Admittedly, the governor never called for a floor test, nor did he ever require the chief minister to establish his majority in the house. The governor's actions based on feuds and wrangles of a breakaway group, which is not recognized under the 10th schedule, cannot be constitutionally condescended. It's directly on point. Because the governor, by asking me to go for a floor test, having a trust vote, has condescended to recognize a breakaway group, expressly prohibited as the governor's action struck down in, in uh, Nabam Rebia. So you, we don't have to go into the issue whether the matter should be sent back to the speaker or not. If you decide this issue, the matter is, nothing else is required to be decided. So we challenge the trust vote. We challenge the action of the government to swear, governor to swear him in as chief minister. 
If that goes, everything else goes. Then we don't have to go into the problematic issue of sending disqualifications back to the speaker. And ultimately, Malad, I mean, I, I, the facts are so crystal clear that they can't be the subject of yet another interpretation. They can't be, Malad. The Constitution doesn't give him that power. The 10th schedule, he is far away, far removed from him. Para 3 has been deleted. Breakaway groups can't be recognized by the... That way, Malaz, every day, a breakaway group will be recognized by the governor and governments will fall. I don't think, Malaz, the Republic expected this. And our constitution, Malaz, ever envisaged a situation that that can happen in our constitutional democracy. The whole integrity of the political process comes to naught. Rameshwar says. Amal, Nabam says the three areas in which the governor has discretion, beyond that, none. 371, Article 200. And Mullahs forming a government at the initial stage after an election. There is no discretion with the governor. He acts otherwise on the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers. The settled law. And of course, 356 Mullahs sending a report to the central government. That's not something on the aid and advice because, so 356, 200, and 371. These are the three areas. Mr. Sibyl, once a person incurs a disqualification yes. under the 10th schedule, then the consequence under Article 193, bracket 3, is that his seat shall thereupon become uh, vacant. Become vacant. Yes. Uh, because 190 in terms of uh, 193 in terms uh, refers to 191.2 yes which refers to the 10 schedule that's correct so the seat shall thereupon become Come vacant so suppose a group of mlas forget this case uh, suppose a group of mlas incurs a disqualification by being a split uh, which otherwise is not recognized by the 10 correct. schedule correct so the the strength of the house therefore comes falls by the extent of the disqualification absolutely uh, in which case the majority required for a motion of confidence would also be uh, would also be altered. So suppose yes, that a house yes. of two hundred members, yes, yes, twenty have become disqualified. Right. Uh, right. Then uh, it would be ninety instead of a hundred for the uh, vote of confidence. Correct. So would the governor in such a case be justified uh, in saying that? Well, I I still without I still want a vote of confidence because assuming that you know these people now are disqualified. I still want to test the uh, the legitimacy of the government after excluding these persons. Can he do well, that? If the arithmetic is so so stacked, well as he can, but nothing more than that. Right. The arithmetic is so stacked, he can. Because the consequence is that those people have to be excluded from the house. I agree. The number comes down, and then he can say, well, I want Correct. to... So therefore, well, the arithmetic... Minus these, minus these people who are disqualified to establish... Uh, absolutely. That they can... uh, no, 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 no dispute on that proposition, but that the arithmetic will decide. That the arithmetic was that. Here, that question doesn't arise. Uh, yeah, we know he's made chief minister. You think by now the judges don't know he's been made chief minister? I don't understand. Well, the, the, your lordship is right, but that the arithmetic will decide. There's no discretion there. He'll call the chief minister. He says, these people are excluded. This is the arithmetic. This is what the numbers are. Prove your majority. No, but then look at it this way for a moment. I mean, we are not at all on the facts here, but just to test a constitutional uh, position, uh, which is that, say, the 
or we can just for the sake of uh, clarity, uh, the Shiv Sena has 56. Yes, or had 56 50, when the government 55. was formed. 55, right? I thought. Oh, uh, sorry, 55. 55. 55. Now, uh, disqualification notices were issued to 22 plus 60 and 38. That's right. So, for a moment, for the argument, we pr proceed with your hypothesis that this is a split and therefore they are disqualified. Right? So, then the Shivshena is left with 17. Yes. If these people are to be disqualified. Yes. So, it comes down to then 17 plus NCP has how many? 44. Or how much? 50, 54. 53. 53. 53 plus 17, 70. Yeah, I just see. And that. Congress is 44, right? Yes, yes, 44. BJP is 106. Even then, it will be fine. Right. So, in such a situation, would the governor be justified in saying that, look, assuming that these people have incurred a disqualification, I still call for a trust board because the impact of these 39, at that stage, he is not deciding the disqualification. At that stage, the governor says, well, according to me, as a constitutional, as a constitutional head, it appears that these people have now, they have split. I'm not deciding that they have split because that's the discretion of the speaker. Can the governor now not say in a given case that, look, these facts now stare, on, uh, stare at me. I, just... I postulate that these people have incurred a disqualification. I don't treat these as members of the house at all. But therefore, because these people stand excluded, and the, and the strength of the ruling of, of the government then falls down to the extent of the, uh, the ex extent of the split. I want a trust vote. Well, as I, just let me, just, well, let me, let me analyze that in two ways. Number one, you can't then administer an oath of office to one of those who is disqualified. Yeah, that's, you're right. Absolutely. Correct. Your, Correct. your line of thinking and line of argument on this is... Uh, okay. Now, let's forget that. That we'll keep aside. We'll keep aside. Let's now, let's the power and of the somebody government. should tell the governor that constitutionally what happens, Mullahs, I from yeah. my little experience, the numbers, if stacked against the government, will go to the governor and say that the leader of the house has lost the confidence of the house. Right. Then he will, then he will, then he will analyze that and call. But governor will not do this. That's not his job. There's a sitting chief minister. It's an elected but government. You're right. At that stage, the governor is not really calling upon someone else to form government. But what he can certainly do is that, well, according to me, you have a ruling party with, say, uh, which is supported in a coalition with, say, 60 members. Out of the 60, 40, which is a split, the governor says that, well, this is a split, and this is a split which is not recognized now by the 10th schedule. The speaker is going to take his own time to decide on the disqualification. But as the constitutional head of state, I do believe that with these 40 having, contrary to the constitution, moved away, at least as a, as a head of the state, I require a trust vote on the floor of the legislative assembly. That well, I don't believe the governor would be wrong in calling for a well, let me. I will say it is wrong, Muller, then I'll constitutionally provide an answer. Why would that The be? moment a governor does that, Muller, uh, take Maharashtra. There are any number of parties, any number of parties apart from Shiv Sena, apart from NCP, apart from Congress. There are so many small parties. Now, those small parties at the moment supporting the whoever there is in power, the moment the governor does that, the buying and selling will start. In fact, the governor will be inviting by his unilateral act of saying, prove your majority. There's, there's no question of proving majority. He is the chief minister. Somebody else has to tell the governor that there is no majority. These are the signatures. These are the people who are with us. He doesn't have majority. If you allow that as a constitutional principle, Malaj, it will be disastrous for democracy. No, but the very fact no. that a disqualification notice has been issued no. initially to 16 and 22, this is not a case where the governor is sort of, you know, finding facts, you know, in the political spectrum. The governor is informed, the governor knows that, well, disqualification notices have been issued to 16 plus 22 or a group of persons, yes. which disqualification, the, 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 uh, the uh, wrath of disqualification, the moment it attaches to a very sizable portion of the MLAs who are part of the uh, ruling, the ruling coalition, can the governor be said to be not justified in saying that, well, I'm not deciding the disqualification. 
but now please establish that you have a majority in the house and i'll decide whether your majority depends on these 39 or your majority is safe irrespective of even, these even otherwise on the arithmetic the numbers are in favor of, of at that time in favor of because the you know mr sibal you are also right the independence of support Sibyl, for a for, for the for the present purpose because we still have to hear them on the on that aspect yeah. so as a hypothesis we proceed on the basis that you are right that these 39 they had really split that too a split is not recognized by the 10 schedule Therefore, they necessarily have to go uh, go out. Right. Asking Mr. Eknath Shinde to form the government, that's a separate issue. We'll keep that aside for a moment. You're, you maybe we'll have to hear them on that. But as a as a as an as an abstract constitutional principle for the governor, what else does he do? Mother, let's mother, let's analyze the numbers now, mother. Does he say that he look, still has the numbers? Make... He still has the numbers. Huh? They are under, only 106. There are independents, there are other parties. Well, I, no, that the point is Sibyl, that is again, you know, because, <laughs> you know, can we say that then the governor, the governor is, you see, a lot of times what happens is the governor may have done something which is absolutely within his power, something which may run afoul of uh, constitutional principle. But we have to shift, uh, we have to separate the grain from the chaff. <laughs> per se, when there is a disqualification notice moved to the speaker, in respect of a sizable group of MLAs belonging to the ruling party, how can we say that the governor is not justified in well, they're going to the government saying, come on now, prove your... When uh, does the governor, well, we'll have to go into that question then, when does the governor call for a floor test? Then we'll have to go into that question. Has ever a governor called for a floor test, well, on his own, when there is a government in power? Never. Never in the constitutional history of India. Never. You the know, reason is simple. So, there is an elected government. He has proved his confidence on the floor of the house. There may be disqualification. You see, because the defection has two consequences. At one level, the defection results in persons who have defected by virtue of a split ceasing to be members of the house. Yeah. But that very defection, which operates to exclude them from the membership of the house, also affects the legitimacy of the government, legitimacy in the sense, the, 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 the strength of the government on the floor of the uh, house. So, can therefore, the very same act, which is unlawful of a group of persons forming a split and going out of the party fold, they incur the wrath of disqualification. That stage would have arisen if the disqualification petitions had been decided. Let's assume, Malad, that your Lordship's example is right. But that stage will arise if the disqualification petitions are decided and they are out of the House. No, but for that purpose, can the government, governor, not say, well, I assume that they will be disqualified. Well, Malad, but they I, they, I, need Sorry, a, I, I need a show of strength on the floor of the House. Malad, the governor has to wait on the, on the constitutional process, the outcome of the constitutional process. Governor cannot say, I'll assume this or I'll assume that. Malad, I'm sorry. I mean, this is a, this is a proposition of constitutional law, Malad, with the greatest respect, no, that was, will ultimately encourage, encourage the kind of things that are happening today and we see all around. Please, please, please. Toppling of the government should be the priority as far as the governor is concerned. Mr. Sibal, you are saying that the constitutionally it's impermissible for the governor to take cognizance of any of those events which are all over. Correct. Nevertheless, his, he has no power to take cognizance of either the 10 schedule uh, notices or even the earlier notices with respect to the speaker Correct. or even those representations of violation of the whip and all that that has happened in the papers yes, all yes, over, yes, yes. he cannot by himself take cognizance of anything like that That's at all correct. and ask the legislator or the chief minister to prove his strength in the correct. in the floor of the house. Correct. Because they are part of the Shiv Sena. They no, themselves say... We are not on Shiv Sena. We are on the power of the government. That's right. Even then. Even the then. The, when an elected government is running the constitutional principle, Malaz, I humbly submit the following. If the numbers are stacked against the elected government for whatever reason, they can go to the governor and say, these are our numbers, these are how they are stacked. Governor Malaj verifies that issue, verifies the signatures. Normally, Malaj, normally uh, that's a practice that used to happen, but governors now say, uh, we don't want to enter into the political thicket. But be that as it may, 
that may be a possibility then for the governor to say, look, I feel that you have lost majority because these people have come to us. But governor on his own can't do that. This is not no power of the governor to, to help in toppling an elected government. Whereas governor, you assume governments, governors will act constitutionally, but how many times have you struck down Mullah's actions of the governor who have acted unconstitutionally? And Mullah's, once that happens, Mullah, then everybody else will get into the act, Mullah, all those independents and all those people belonging to small parties. Uh, I don't want to say anything more. So, Mullah, please, please don't lay down a constitutional principle that will create havoc. But Mr. Sibbal, suppose in a given case, yes. not in this case, the majority of the people in power, correct, sub, uh, we were part of the government. They, along with the other party, correct, goes to the governor and says that, sir, correct, uh, the, the, the present government, government, correct, has lost the confidence. We are the persons, correct. In that case, the government cannot. cannot. But governor came, why? Because governor is, has to set. No, they are still the party, Mother. They are still in the party. It is against paragraph three. All right. Because paragraph three doesn't recognize majority minority. Apropos what my Lan brother said, and you know, in, I remember when we were much younger, there would be that parade of MLAs before the governor. Yes, yes, I, I don't see that now. <laughs> that used to happen in the 1980s. Yeah, now it's not happening anymore. Anymore. Yes. Because that's why, my, my lord, is the right question, but whereas majority is now prohibited under three. It no, but matter. can, but uh, just I'm taking the line of, uh, you know, the, the reasoning which my Lan brother put forth. Could the governor not say that, well, I want you to demonstrate that you have your majority in the house, all that I exclude 20 people who have in an 80 member house, I exclude the 20. I, I, I learn that there are disqualification petitions against 20 out of an 80 member house. Come before me, op demonstrate to me that you still have 40 MLAs before you. But we could but have you. demonstrated and we would have won. If those 40 are even so, if they are excluded. So, so therefore, Mr. Sibyl, the governor can even you. No, Malaz, I don't concede. agree with that proposition. No, that the governor can certainly say that demonstrate right. to me that you have 40 out of 80 no. MLAs in an 80 member house. It's nobody for the it is not for the governor to say that. It's for those people in the house to go to the governor and say they have lost majority. It's not for the governor to enter into the Fair enough. But suppose those people, therefore. Obviously, the opposition in the House would say, well, they have lost their 40. In which case, what, the gov what does the governor do? At a primary level, the governor says, well, now they, I, have, I have learned from the opposition that you have you ceased to have 40 out of 80, which you had originally, or say 45 out of 80, because 20 have now been issued disqualification notices, so that your strength comes from 45 to 25. Now, please, prima facie, demonstrate to me that you still have Okay, well, uh, 40. Let, let me try and answer that. Let, How does the governor then uh, proceed? What does the answer. governor do in a situation let like that? Let me try and answer that. Malads, one, Malads, governor prima facie on the arithmetic of the house must first come to the conclusion that the leader of the house has lost the confidence of the house. Absolutely correct. How will he decide that? If somebody goes to him. Malads, somebody goes to him and says, he, this, prime, this chief minister has lost the majority, lost the confidence of the house because now, these are the numbers. Two sets of people could go. Either the opposition would go or even the defecting MLAs would go. I mean, no, they have. Can't. No, no, they can't. Why? They will say that, well, we don't support this government. Hypothetical examples ultimately, when and if it comes to your lordship's bullets, because we are not dealing with that situation. We are dealing with a person who who has been recognized by the governor, who happens to be part of the 30 to 39, and who has given oath of office, bullets. We are only dealing with that issue. As and when that issue and some hypothetical stage comes in, we can debate that constitutional issue. But why? But it's not hypothetical here at all. It's a live issue here, for the reason that once the governor is in possession of facts which indicate. That a very substantial. Which is the fact that indicates that he has that, lost the majority it, of the that house. There were, no, that out of 55, yes. out of 55 MLAs, 38 
there are disqualification notices issued so, by the ruling so the, by 15, the ruling coalition plus 50 53 plus we have the ex facial bullets please are, please let's why why go into numbers just see the f f fact all right let's have the let's let's have, have the, the arithmetic bullets. yes uh you say now had 55 I don't know, but let's just see that. Shivsena is 55. Shivsena, we just know it's 50. 55. Congress had 44. 62. Congress is 55. Congress is 53. 53. No, no, sorry, 44. 44 is Congress. NCP is 53. And NCP is 53. And my request to your lordships, please call for the records of the governor, whether he's gone through this exercise or not. Yeah, that's the point you're making. Please call for the records if that's the case. And how much was the BJP? One zero. One zero six. One zero six. And independents and other parties? Yeah. We would have been. That will be about twenty odd, no? But you'll have twenty. To explore this, uh, no. There would be one twenty three millers. Half may mark is one twenty four. One twenty. So. Some is yes. So as a result of say the disqualification notices which are given to thirty nine. Yes. Out of one fifty two. The ruling coalition comes down to 113. Okay. Well, first of all, only 34 residents had written to the governor, governor not, 30, not 39. Only 34. Only 34. 34. Only, wrote only 34 to wrote to the governor. Right. So, I'll just so let's let's, let's, well, let's get the arithmetic then. It comes to 120. Eighteen three nine nine seventy. Forty six. Yeah. Two forty six is the house. Half of it will be one twenty three. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Twenty three. Then they will become 126. Mm -hmm. Oh, you will become this one. Because then it's our four minus one. Only take out 34. How much do they have? 164? At page 59. We've now got the from Mr. Sibyl 55 SS, 44 C. 53 NCP. That's correct. Comes to 152. Yes. What minus 30 now? 288 is the number. Minus 34 number. went to the governor. Uh, minus 34. Yes. But there were 39 disqualified. No, no, but Malas, what went to the governor? If the governor is to look at it, then he has to look at 34. Certainly. So 288 minus 34. So 254. 287 minus 34 is 288, no? 288. 288. 288. One passed away. So 288 was 287. One, one passed away. One passed away. So 287. So 287 minus 34 is 253. Yes. So 253 uh, divided by 2. 2 mothers. 127. 127. Yes. They don't have 127. No, but the point is then the governor will say, if you exclude the people in respect of whom there is an allegation of defection from your side. We have 127 mullahs in this arithmetic. How do you have 127? We're telling you mullahs 54, 44, 15 is 113 plus 14 MLAs, independent MLAs. In small parties is 14. No, therefore, now look. At, in fact, if China will be 21. Mr. Mr. Sibyl, look at it this way. 55 plus 44 plus 53 is 152. Huh? 152 was your strength. Yes. Of the basic three parties who yes. formed the government. Yes. From that, instead of excluding. Plus 14, Muller, there are who are supporting us. Why are you excluding? Okay. Now, they are independent supporting us. Fair enough. Now, 152 minus 34, also, if you take, yes. you're down to 118. Right? Yes. Which is below the below the 125 mark. Right? Now 127 mark. Below the 127 mark. Now you say you have some independents who are supporting. There's all in the supporting. Right? There, there are some independents who are supporting. Both there sides had independent support. Now, they had 11 supporting. One second. One second. One second. One second. We're just, we're trying to, un 
look these examples are only to see what the governor should in a situation we are just giving exactly. well, then, just oh well it is not just what did but, he apply his mind to this issue well this is all very well we are happening in a court of law but did he apply his mind to this issue but mr sibal one thing which we cannot therefore discount the governor has two responsibilities one the governor cannot enter into the thicket of disqualification two the governor cannot do anything which seems to protect those who have incurred the wrath of disqualification there we are with you completely equally what is of concern to us is that the governor in all these political wranglings and you know whatever goes on in the polity there is a very high constitutional principle which is that whoever is sworn in as the chief minister must ultimately have accountability to parliament and therefore to the people otherwise what we will be doing is that the the defections have two consequences the defectors have a personal consequence that they get out of the house that their seats become vacant but equally we cannot gloss over the fact that the defection affects the stability of the government itself and how does the governor as an elected as the head of the state ignore the consequence of where is that question that arises here mullers where is that question please how does it arise here how did the governor governor didn't look at all this what your mots were putting to me as for the records so mullers why go into a hypothetical situation mullers with the greatest respect mullers your lordships have so much experience let's not trade into areas which we are not called upon to trade upon we are here as to how 39 or whatever 34 go to the governor and the governor recognizes the 34 knowing that they are in the shiv sena there is there is the leader of the shiv sena they recognize is udav thakre he recognizes the split and uh, and and uh, administer the north of office how does all this enter into this uh, into the reckoning here as a, as a principle you are saying that the gov governor could not have got into it has not got into yes, it number one yes is not yes and uh, the premise for that is that the governor governor cannot do it constitutionally that's right he should not that's all that that's all that your lordship is to consider and i can understand mullers i can understand the situation there can be another hypothetical i'm sorry so once there is an existing government according to you yes which yes. this was this is not yes. a government formation for the first time that's correct then the governor short of a no confidence vote which is brought on the floor of the house yes. the governor must ensure that the the existing position continues until somebody brings a no confidence that's the only way now your lordships have laid that down no longer parading no longer uh, comparing signatures all that is over so if they think if the bjp thought that we had lost confidence they should have moved a motion that is because of bommai which say, which said that it's only the floor of the house that's that correct so you move a no confidence how do these issues come in at all there's no discretion so according to you as a matter of principle, principle absent of a, absent a motion of no confidence that's right. the governor must continue with the existing position that's correct because there's an elected government all right we got it right now this is much worse that he recognizes the split and administer the north of office and thereafter the float test was subsequently yes that is on fourth yes on fourth third or fourth including those 39 but there uh, so far speaking for myself can the governor correct because the under the 10 schedule it is for the speaker to take a decision right correct can the governor governor correct on his own without any disqualify the speaker can take cognizance that they are uh, they are uh, Yes, your lordship is right absolutely right but they are still the shiv sena that question will still have to be answered what is that what are the 39 they are still the shiv sena so then he recognizes the split that's the problem that's why the tension you that's why the whole paragraph this is the whole the issue when c was eliminated it was only for the purposes deleted it is only for the purposes majority or minority you can't destabilize an elected government and constitutional morality is was the was the linchpin mother so the so well, let's say and that's why i told your lordships ideally the governor should have said no further action get your disqualification decided then i will see i told that to your, your lordship earlier well suppose the speaker doesn't decide well, right, no, no, but no. listen 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 <laughs> yeah, suppose suppose these qualification questions are not decided at all in the meantime the governor is satisfied 
ट is on the one hand yes governor's over anxiety saying that okay you prove the majority right right on the other hand we have a speaker exercising that discretion and says now come on you immediately show i will disqualify all of you so these are the two constitutions but there's the judici- one is one is subject to judicial review the other is not difference is one is subject to judicial review the other is not all are subject to judicial review no matter but once a new government is formed or else if he calls for a trust new government is formed or else what judicial review true true a remedy is a different matter i agree with you that yeah. there is a remedy yeah. but really speaking it's there and what we need to interpret is the scope of the jurisdiction of the governor and the scope of the jurisdiction of the speaker also the speaker of course the scope of jurisdiction is clear he has to decide the matter open extent he has to decide the matter and well as uh, so really the governor keeps his hand second limb of it is how does he call uh, eknath shinde to administer oath of office yeah. normal as nice just can't he come to pay back to say anything right now but factually I I learn learn you, please we will yes. all right but factually read a fact. incorrect statement right that there was no input given to the governor there were two letters sent to the governor which the governor has referred to in a letter to mr udav thakre before he called for a floor test correct correct absolutely so that there is enough material once, for the governor one, one, to decide that this I government think, was being i weak. think my learned friends uh, have to first have to ask the other side what 
so is the material before the governor on the basis of yes. he asked mr shinde to form the government well there's no they're not that's one uh. particularly when he knew that this was really a breakaway faction of yes. the yes how does he justify that the the question is how do you administer an oath of office to eknath shinde no man i can understand i man there will be another there is another situation there are multi parties manas not just in this case there are in several states manas we have a multi party system several parties come together and manas suddenly suddenly a no confidence is moved manas or somebody seeks and in the meantime some disqualification petitions are pending at that stage the governor doesn't bother about the disqualification petitions there is a no confidence these fellows will be vote Can you see, Malas, the consequences? We'll take the 39 to be validly members of the House, not disqualified. Disqualification petitions pending. Move a no-confidence motion. Now they can't move a no-confidence motion because the 39 will be subject to the whip. So they know that they don't have majority. Therefore, what do they do? Thirty-nine go to the governor and say that now recognize me. So please appreciate, Malas, the way to 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 ensure that the government falls is to move the no confidence. Why did they not move it? They could have the thirty-nine could have voted. They are members of the legislature. They did not move it because they knew. that they are part of the shiv sena subject to the whip the government will sustain will not fall so the only way out was this conspiracy and that was hacked hatched much earlier that's how they went to gujarat and assam having done that they wrote that letter which i read to you lot his manas i have read that letter that you know this present government the the party members are very unhappy with it uh, we have been not following the ideology of bala saab all that letter i read to you lot his manas and then they go to the speaker so whether it's majority minority it really doesn't matter manas So how could the trust vote be called? Trust vote means that you have prima facie lost confidence. Governor knows that this government has not not not. not. Why we go into the matter, Malas? That the that the that the governor will presume that these people will be will be disqualified. Why do we even presume that they are qualified till such time as they are disqualified? So move on, no confidence. so mothers your losses must ask the question why did you do that and well let me put it this way if they were so concerned mothers they should have voted against the whip they should have voted against the whip and if they had i'm sorry if they had voted this part now we are this part we are over now mothers i just want you to point out prepare 240 240 the sarkaria commission is quoted i just want to deal with that para 4.11.04 of the sarkaria law chief has that page 101 of the sarkaria commission report specifically deals with the situation where there is no single party obtains absolute majority and the and provides the order of preference the governor should follow in the selecting of chief minister the order of preference suggested is an alliance of parties that was formed prior to the elections kindly just mark the word alliance the largest single party staking a claim to form the government with the support of others including independents then a post electoral coalition of parties with all the partners 
in the coalition joining the government. Kindly mark the word coalition of parties, post electoral, co electoral coalition of parties. And then a post electoral alliance of parties with some of the parties in the alliance forming a government and the remaining parties, including independents, supporting the government from outside. No other exception is there. Now, kindly mark this that there has to be an, a, a party supporting for the purposes of the floor test. There has to be an alliance as a matter of law. Therefore, the governor cannot exercise any discretion. He must ask what party you belong to. I'm done with this issue, Balaj. Now, just two more issues and I'm finished, Balaj. Number one, your lordships have not noticed that Gugavale was appointed as the whip from Assam. If your lordships agree with me as a proposition of law, okay. that the whips cannot be appointed in this fashion. Ultimately, the speaker once that government is formed on the third, recognizes Gagavale. Right, Mullahs? And then I am issued, our, our legislators are issued a notice for disqualification on the 8th of July. If your lordships agrees with my proposition of law that whips cannot be appointed in this fashion, then our notices should be quashed by this court. Subsequent notices. You yeah. are not Under 21B or 21A. Yes. Against us, notices against us. Correct, correct, correct. Yes, two one B. Two one B. Yes. But they, they are virtually uh, non-issue, right? No, it's not a non-issue, Mother. There's a notice of disqualification against me with that. I, because they say Gugavale, ex, Gugavale gave a whip. You are right. You are right. right. So, Mother, it's a live issue. The legislators, for us. Uh, legislators uh, whip. Correct. Not the political parties. Not, yes, yes, legislators whip. So, Mother, therefore, my request to your lordships is that that. Notice for disqualification must be struck down by your lordship. If your lordships, of course, agree that you cannot appoint a whip from outside. But that's the direct challenge also. Yes, we've challenged that. that you have ch yes, I've challenged that, Melissa. Now, one more point, Mullahs. Your Lordships, Mullahs, in September, when a whole petition was argued that the Election Commission should not proceed, your Lordship said, no stay. Fine, Mullahs, no stay. We went back, Mullahs, what happened was we thought, and this is my, well, as we interpreted that order to mean that the proceeding before the commission said go on. Fine, well, let's let them go on. The problem arose that we told the commission that if you take this test of organization and representation in the legislature, you necessarily will have to include 38 or 39. And therefore, if you take that into account, your outcome, your result well may be that they get the symbol. But that very matter is pending before the Supreme Court about the disqualification of these 39. So please stay your hands and let the Supreme Court decide. Now, I personally feel, Miller, that was not counter, it was not antithetical to your lordships order of stay. After all, the election commission has, has also to decide in accordance with law. 
the result was, I mean, this is again, the sad part of it. The result was the commission says, I'm not going to bother about the organization. These 39 members are majority, therefore they get the symbol. In fact, your Lordship's order was misused. But we are not considering the validity of the order passed for the election. No, I'm not asking, Malas. I'm yes. really saying the commission said, the High Court said, Supreme Court has said no stay, therefore they have to decide. That too should be tested in those proceedings, no? No, that's not. But kindly see the consequences, Malas. Kindly see how we are hurt. That's why the reference, what is the scope of powers of the election commission in respect of determination split within the party. Malas, I'm only, Malas, I'm not, your law is passed, Malas, rightly so, according to me, that let the commission, but the commission doesn't have to, can't disregard basic principles that you are giving symbol to a party on the strength of those 39 whose and disqualifications that, are pending. And that issue is pending before this. That's pending. And I said to them, please stay your hands. They said, no, but Supreme Court has said that we have to go on. That's how the symbol was give, is given. See the injustice caused to us. I just make the point, Mullahs, and not go further. And then the last thing, Mullahs, kindly read now paragraph 115 with me. And then I'm done, Mullahs. Para? 115 of the symbols order. 15, 15 of the symbols. 15, 15. Sorry. Para, yeah. 15, 15, 15. <laughs> Statute compilation, Mullahs. Sorry. Important. Page 91. It starts. Page 91, it starts, Mullahs. And paragraph 15 is at page 103. PDF 103. Yes. 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 Says Malas, when a lordship have it, when yes, the commission yes. is satisfied on information in its possession that there are rival sections or groups of a recognized political party, each of whom claims to be that party. Malas, I'll just stop here. So the jurisdiction of the commission starts when there is a claim that there are rival groups within the party. And it, has, it must have evidence in its possession, information in its possession, and must be satisfied with the information that is in their possession. So they are rival groups. Now, your lordships have seen the correspondence 21st June onwards, there is not a whisper of any rival group. Not a whisper. It's only the 39 sitting there. So, uh, this, uh, just to rephrase it, according to you, there was no information in the possession of the yes. EC yes. to show that there are rival groups yes. and it yes. has to be satisfied. Yes. Now, no. the petition. Can you just rephrase your submission, Mr. Sibyl, again on this point? Malaz, well, I'm saying, Malaz, the, the jurisdiction of the commission will commence when the commission has it in its possession information on which it is satisfied that there are two rival factions within a political party. Right. And in this case, what is the... Now, now Malaz, you kindly see. Therefore, in the context of this 10th scheduled, Malaz, now, just, just that, that proposition. In the context of the 10th schedule, the only way you can get a symbol is when there are two rival factions within the party. It has nothing to do with the 10th schedule. No, this has nothing to do with the 10th schedule. Correct. Right, so Malas, there has to be, there has to be a 
a faction emerging. Take, for example, Malas, majority of the people in the 10th schedule let's, uh, are with, with Thakre. Let's assume all 55 are with Thakre. Then also para 15 Malas can be, can be invoked. By somebody making an application. Because 15, ref para, you ah, para 15 refers to the party. Ah. That's right. So, so Malas, the split has to, refers to, correct, the split has to take place. I'm only, I, I'm right. agreeing, Malas, I'm saying exactly. Right. That split has to take place within the party. Right. That split did not take place on 21st June or immediately thereafter. Never took place. A petition is filed on the 19th of July. Correct, correct. 19th of July. Just note that, Malas. 19th of July. 19th of July. 19th July, absolutely. Correct. Right. And on the 18th of July, it is alleged, what is, what is submitted along with the petition is minutes of meetings Minutes of meetings, well, will, will, my, will my Lord be, allow me to just place before your Lordships, just give it to my Lord, please. Yeah, we'll give you the copy. This is on 18th July. The matter was fixed in this court on 20th July. But petitions, all petitions were to come up for directions. So from 21st of June to the 18th of July, nothing happened. No faction, no claim for faction. On, just give it to my lords, please. Now, let's, on 18th of July, just kindly come to page 7 of this compilation. Huh? What is this? Page oh. Minutes of meeting of? Minutes, Minutes of the meeting. Of Translation of the Pratinidhi Sabha. Page 7. Typed as page 7. Minutes. Where is the Marathi star? Just, I can read the English. We to that in the Marathi, Mulas. Uh, it's what page? The, 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 it says on top page, page, on top page 48. 48. Page. Three pages for that. Three pages for that. Oh, before Malas, the English version. Forty six. Now, what do you have here? Your lordships may take it. There is no summons for any meeting. No venue for any meeting. No time for any meeting. No signatures obtained of at the meeting. Nothing. Just note that. No time, no place, no uh, date is given 18 July, no summons. I suppose this is a meeting of the Pratinidhi Sabha of the Shiv Sena. So it must be known to everybody where the meeting is going to be. Summons must be sent like we sent to them. Right? What they do is they give a translation of the minutes of the Pratinidhi Sabha. And in the minutes, they show some resolutions have been passed. Minutes, as your lordship will know, is after the meeting. It can't be before the meeting. Right? Has to be after the meeting. So there is the minutes of the Pratinidhi Sabha. And Miller, there are also minutes of the Karya Karni. That your lordship will see at page, page 10. Again, minutes. Again, when it is held, what time is it held, where it is held. Yes, they say it happened, it is held in Bombay. I guess, Malats, some place in Bombay, they must have known. 
Now, so two minutes are placed before the election commission. These two minutes. Subsequent minutes also of what date? 27th, 27th of July. That's even more interesting. Well, just note the note 27th July. And then go back to the petition mullahs that they filed. It's very interesting. These are the two documents that they placed, nothing more. Plus, of course, appointment of people. We're not into that. Convenience volume, Convenience volume two. Page uh, volume two. Convenience. Volume two. Convenience volume two. Yes. Yeah. Kindly see page uh, PDF page six ninety nine. Paragraph eight. No. Oh, sorry. Six, sorry, 698. Where is that? Yes. 698, Romans 626. PDF page? PDF page 698. This petition is filed on the 19th of July. Just mark that, Mullahs. This averment is made when the petition is filed on 19th July. Is the page number page number? Uh, 698, Mullahs. Thank you. PDF 698. And just go above that, Mullahs, Roman 25 at 697, the last two lines of that page, if your lordship has that. What is this document that we are you pointed out? It says uh, further a meeting of the Pratidhi Sabha was convened on 18th of July. Your Lordship has that sentence? Yes. Whereby the petitioner Eknath Shinde was appointed as senior leader and Shiv Sena Mukhya Neta, main leader, minutes of the meeting of the Pratidhi Sabha. So they say minutes of the meeting are there. No meeting, no place, where it was held, when it was held, who was summoned, nothing, nothing. Right. Then come to the next para. A meeting of the Rashtri Karikarani was also convened, whereby the Rashtri Karikarani has affirmed, now please note this, has affirmed the election of the petitioner as the Shiv Sena senior leader and Shiv Sena Mukhya Neta. Now this is on 19th July, and the minutes of that are 27th July. <laughs> I showed that to your Lordship. This petition is filed on 19th July. He says that the petitioner was elected as the senior leader and senior Mukhya Neta. The minutes are dated 27 July. This is what they filed, Mullahs. So 19 July, they could not have known what would happen on 27 July. And that also minutes of meeting. These are the only two documents with the commission. That's why I read paragraph 15. These are the two documents with the commission. in respect of, to prove that there are two factions arising. And second document was submitted during the course of hearing, but be that, I don't want to go into that. I'm just only interpreting 115, 15. This is the documents in their possession, information on the basis of which election commission is satisfied that, is, that there are two factions within the party. So minutes of meeting, well, that's... Where, are the min where are the minutes of meeting here in this compilation page, PDF page? Yes, we just shown that one. Here and it's not there. It's, no. we, I just, no, that's, that's why we... It's not an annexure. That's why I gave that to your logic. Just a simple, but that's not an annexure to the petition. Are we right? Not in, it's not here, Malad. That's why I gave you a lot. No, no. Where are those what minutes? You, I, I'm just, let me hear my... Lord. What you have read of this para 26, Para 25 refers to annexure P5, which is the minutes of the meeting of the... We have a it, That's minutes. We don't have. But the petition also does it and close it is what we are trying to answer. Yes, yes. That was handed over, Malas. It doesn't say. That's why we gave it to your Lordship. That is of the 27th. Yes. So now it says 27th. This petition is filed on 29th. These are the... These are... They did enclose the... Second one they didn't enclose, first one they've enclosed, P5 they enclosed. So, Mother, these are the two documents with the commission. 
Now, if you read paragraph 15, this represents a two factions in the party, the minutes of meeting. That's how the election commission mullahs got jurisdiction, according to them. And mullahs, this is a final order. This is kindly just look at it. I can understand if the commission says lead evidence. I can understand. Please prove your case. On this basis, a final order is passed, which is the subject matter of challenge in the other proceeding. That's how they got the symbol. So what does the governor do? What does the election commission do? And this is the evidence. And then we have to, uh, you know, get, uh, we must ensure, we must trust that all institutional authorities function in accordance with the law. And if this kind of manipulation takes place, Malad, in the processes of, of institutional decision making, where we go, Malad, I, where we will go, I don't know. I am done, Malads. I just want to make one, one, one non-statement. I stand here not for this case. I may lose it. I may win it. That's another matter. But I stand here, Malads, for the protection of what we so, what is so close to our heart: institutional integrity, and to ensure that processes of constitutional processes survive. Otherwise, if your lordships endorse such a position, it will be the death knell of what we have cherished since 1950. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Singhvi.